Hello everyone, as you've probably seen by my book hauls and everything, I have a physical TBR of over 100 books. One of my main goals of 2024 is to get that down as much as possible, and I'm starting off this year with a minimum month-long book buying ban, which has been absolutely horrendous if you ask me. Join me in this video to read some of my most anticipated reads and get my physical TBR down just a little bit lower. So the first book of this video, and my first read of 2024, is actually Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. I've been dying to get into this book for months now, since I read the first one in August. I don't know what possessed me to love the first one so much, other than the fact that I love the writing, the world it was set in, the characters and everything. So obviously this one has been sat on my physical TBR for months now, but I felt like last year I had to prioritise more Christmassy reads, more autumnal reads as well, and more books that are set from that season. So now we're in a fresh new year, I can read whatever the hell I want. So we're going to start off with Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. I have a gut feeling I'm going to love this because I've heard nothing but great things and I'm so excited. I'm going to start it now. currently on chapter three which is page 25 so made a little dent into it so far i feel like everything from the first book is coming back to me now obviously i did read it in august it's quite a few months ago like half a year ago so i was really thinking like what am i actually going to remember from this am i going to remember everything not that you really need to remember anything because it's a romance book nothing particularly important happens but everything is coming back to me now i did go into this quite a bit blind actually obviously i knew who the character was who the main female was because we met her in the first book but it's nice to get like a little bit more of her life and the new dr jacob maddox life as well i'm really liking these characters already actually i feel like i haven't liked characters this quick in a long long time which is good normally it takes me like a good few chapters to sort of start liking them i think because we got background on brianna from the first book Every time I film, someone goes past my house really loudly. Why? Why do you need to do that, please? Anyway, I'm gonna keep reading and I just wanted to quickly give like a brief little update. Obviously I'm only on page 25, so not much to say yet, but thoroughly enjoying it so far. I love the writing style, it's literally perfect. And I cannot wait to see where the story goes. I'm excited. Another thing that I just want to quickly say about Abby Jimenez and her writing and her books in general, they might seem like cute fluffy reads and for the most part they are. For the most part they are these cute small town happy vibe books but they do focus on quite some serious topics. I remember the first one had some physical and emotional violence in it and this one so far spoken about long term illnesses, some bad relationships and stuff and mental health so it's important that these topics are being brought up. But if that's not for you, maybe steer away from these books. It's nothing crazy, no trigger warnings as such, but maybe just bear that in mind before you go into her books. Hi guys, so I just wanted to take a little break into the video just to tell you about today's partnership. You've probably heard me talk about them multiple times now, but this video is in partnership with Serious Lights. I've been using this light for around four months now, and I can safely say that it literally is the best light that I've ever used. I've tried multiple reading lights in the past, little clip-on ones, stand-up lamps, and just all different ranges, and this one has been my favourite, and I'm being very serious when saying that. <laughs> serious. I feel like what I like about this one so much is that it is adjustable. Some lights just give you the basic settings. With this one, you can sort of customise it to your needs. You can change the height of it. You can change the brightness of it. You can turn it on to any setting that you'd like, whether that's really bright or really low. And it also replicates daylight as close as scientifically possible by using daylight wavelength technology, which means that when you're reading late at night, it doesn't interfere with your eyes. It's not blue light or anything. And it's actually really, really good because it means that you can stay up later while reading. And there's just many, many perks of it. But I just wanted to give it a quick mention here because obviously I've had it for nearly half a year now which is just so amazing and it has honestly like changed my life having this reading light here. I use it nearly every single day. I will sit here and use my reading light. It's to the point where I want to take it to Riley's house with me but am I going to transport it? Probably not because I'm lazy but at some point I probably will. It is such an amazing light. There's just so many benefits from having one and I highly highly recommend that you get one for yourself but obviously if you do want one for yourself then you can use my code SR497 for £100 off your order plus free delivery as well. 
I don't want to be dramatic and say that it's changed my life, but it's definitely changed my reading experience. Highly, highly recommend. Where's the dog going? Okay, so I'm on chapter 46 and when I tell you that I binged over half of this book just yesterday, I'm not lying. This book is so good and I literally can't even like think about it, like I'm literally sitting here giggling about it. The only reason I stopped reading last night, I've literally got like 30 pages left, but I was so so tired to the point where I couldn't even like open my eyes, I was like prying my eyes open just to try and finish this book, but I was like no I'm not going to appreciate it if I just stay awake right now. So I went to sleep, I've got 30 pages left, oh my god, and I'm going to get it finished now, I can't wait. Why did I stop reading last night at the most heartbreaking point of the book, by the way? Why did I think it was okay for my little brain to do that? Please, let's not. Jacob Maddox is literally like the blueprint for all men. Like, if you're not like him, you do not even deserve to breathe. This man is like top tier book boyfriend, top tier men in my life. Like, I don't know. I, I can't even speak. I actually just don't even have words. Oh my God. So I finished yours truly this morning and I just thought I'd give like a little review and my opinion and everything and I'm going to start off by saying that what are the chances of my first book of 2024 being a five star? I obviously knew that I was going to love this after reading Part of Your World back in August and I already liked the world it was set in, I already liked the characters from what we briefly saw in Part of Your World but when I say that they are like the most deserving characters of their own book like I'm gonna put that out there. Hearing their stories, hearing the troubles that they went through, I feel like Abby Jimenez takes these hard situations and just brings them into such a positive light. So there's talks of mental health and anxiety, there's talks of chronic illnesses, talks of past abusive relationships and all of that stuff that obviously are not nice topics to talk about but Abby Jimenez does it in such an entertaining, light-hearted but still keeping it real kind of way if that makes sense and the writing is just so lyrical and I just love the characters so much I feel like I've never liked characters this quick in my life from the first chapter from part of your world from reading the last book I already love Brianna and then meeting Jacob in this one I honestly think he's just the blueprint for men I feel like all men should read Jacob in this book and if you're not acting like him by the end of it you need a reread and you need to reread it until you get your act together because this man is where it's at and this is exactly how men should be <laughs> he's so gentle he's so caring he's so kind he's in touch with his mind and his mental health and he knows exactly what works for him and what doesn't and that really does like resonate with me and i feel like i really resonated with him as a character i feel like normally i resonate with obviously the female characters but in this book i really strongly resonated with jacob as well which is so fun but now i'm in the predicament of what do i read next because that started off the year so well literally started off the year with a bang and now part of me is like it's pressure now the pressure is on to pick another potentially five star hopefully book but i doubt that's gonna happen it's probably not is it we started off so well and now i'm like i can't top that now what <sighs> What am I gonna do? Now the only problem is I'm heading to Riley's in a minute and I still haven't picked the book I want to read. And yes, this video is getting books off of my physical TBR. And yes, I'm gonna still continue to do that. But what I'm gonna do is not take a new book with me because I feel like I'm just gonna pick the wrong one. I don't want to take a load of books for no reason because I can't decide what I want to read. And then when I get there, I'm just gonna have to take my Kindle with me, potentially download a book that's already on my physical TBR onto my Kindle and just start that. That's the plan. I will see you soon when I pick a book. <laughs> So, as I said earlier, obviously I'm at Riley's now, if you couldn't tell. And I am just going to quickly address that I do have the same reading chair in both houses. <laughs> but I still don't know what I want to read. Honestly, it got to the point where I was like, I need to bring a book with me and I actually just don't know what I'm going to do. I've actually been like a little bit stressed about what I want to read because I'm still in this great mood to read. Obviously, after just reading a five star, I was like, right, I'm really going to get into reading. I'm going to use this to my advantage and just binge a load of books. But because yours truly was so good... I now don't know what I want to go into next. And if I don't use the mood to read as an opportunity to read more, I will get into a slump. And now I don't know what to read. 
I am thinking, because obviously I've just read a romance and it was a really good romance, part of me wants to read more romance because then I'm like, oh, this would be good because I'm in a romance mood. However, I don't want to then get in a romance slump because I will be comparing whatever I read to yours truly. Maybe I'll read a mystery or thriller or something. But what ones have I got on my physical TBR? Because obviously I'm here now, I'm not at home. Anyway, just going to give a little update on The Naturals and just wanted to say that I've literally binged the first 60% of this book in one go. I was going to dabble in it a little bit tonight and I was going to dip my toe in and then go home tomorrow, get the physical copy and then read the rest. But when I tell you that I am so enamoured into this story and just so... So what? Give me a word. Just enjoying it. Baby, you can't use that now, you're so mean. Riley may or may not have used a word that is not safe for YouTube, so I had to cut that right out. But I, as I was saying, and as I was trying to say, I was so enamoured into this story that I literally just binged the first, like, over half of the book in one sitting. And the only reason I'm not finishing it tonight is because I'm literally so tired that I can, like, barely keep my eyes open. I'm, like, prying my eyes open to read this book, but I'm not even gonna just say this this book is genuinely looking like another five star read from me which i don't think i've ever had two five star reads in a row considering it took me so long to pick this book it's taken me all day to want to read this and i'm already absolutely loving it and i've only got like 40 percent of it left which is actually really sad one of my main goals of this year is to mood read and so far so good but i'm gonna go to sleep now It's just hiding behind my face <laughs> but i finished the naturals earlier so i wanted to give you a little bit of an update i feel like all of these naturals clips where i've like been talking to you have just been at night time i promise i do read sometimes in the day as well <laughs> but I managed to finish this earlier and pff, you'd never guess what it's another five star i don't think i've ever had two five star reads in a row ever but I think I'm literally going to put it down to the fact that I'm switching up with genres. I think I do tend to hyperfixate on certain genres at once because that's what I'm in the mood for. So I'll read 10 romance books for one thriller. Whereas now I feel like one of my goals this year is to sort of make sure I'm switching things up a little bit more because I feel like I'll have a lot more of a successful month because of it. Not only in ratings, but also in how many books I read as well, because if I'm still in the mood to read, I'll then obviously read more. And obviously the way to keep in the mood is to always change it up and stuff. So yeah, really, really enjoyed this. I feel like obviously if you guys probably are an avid watcher of my channel, you'll know by now that The Good Girl's Guide to Murder trilogy is my all time, like favourite favourite, some of my favourite books in the world. And I'm yet to find a book that feels like that kind of vibe to me. I've tried so many thrillers, so many mysteries, so many YA things, and nothing's ever the same. And I can safely say that this is probably the closest I've ever got to the feeling that I had when I read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. Like, I read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder in like 2018, I think it was, or whenever, I don't know. I have no recollection of actually reading it, I just know that I absolutely loved it, it is one of my favourite books. And now this one is a close, close second. So I highly, highly recommend this one. If you have this sitting on your shelf and you're like, do I pick it up? Not sure if I'm going to be in the mood do it. Not only was it just really really fun but it was also such an easy read I feel like because it was YA as well you literally just fly through it. As I said I didn't even mean to read as much as I did in one go and then I literally read 60% in one go without even stopping. Like pff. today I went out to a basketball game on the train we had like a little away game to go to. I feel like I'm always just at basketball in all of these videos. I don't have to go I just enjoy watching it. <laughs> And then obviously I managed to read a couple pages on the train and stuff and then I binged the rest of it as I got back. But amazing, amazing book. An amazing start to the year. I'm so in the mood to read still. I think I'm going to go to bed now because it is late. But tomorrow we're going to be starting our next book. And I think I have one in mind. So you will have to wait and see.
Hello guys! A little update for you. I'm gonna start a new book today, which I'm most excited about. But first of all, I just wanted to show you like a couple of cute things and then I'll get on to like what book I'm reading and stuff. I just wanted to show you this because I actually think it's like the cutest thing ever to the point where it made me actually like sob. Look at how cute this is. My little sister-in-law, Riley's little sister, made me a YouTube plaque for him 5k. 5.15k specifically. And it says congrats 5.15k subscribers, Ella Rose reads. Wow. How flipping adorable is that? I oh. it actually made me like cry my little heart out when she gave this to me. How sweet. And then I'm going to keep this forever and hopefully if I ever get a 100k subscriber plaque, I will definitely put this one next to it. How adorable. I actually just thought I'd show you this because it's just so cute. Another thing Oh my god. <clears throat> Another thing, it's my two year bookstagram anniversary soon. So I took some pictures today of this massive two balloon with like a cute little like load of books and stuff. By the time this video goes up, the pictures will be up because my anniversary thing would have gone. So go and check out my bookstagram. But I thought that was really cool. I've just got this massive two balloon in my room. I mean, look at it compared to me. <laughs> it's like the same size as me. But now we're going to be talking about the book I'm going to start. And spoiler alert, already showed you. It's A Mile High by Liz Tom Ford. I'm going to be honest with you. This book has been on my TBR since I first like sort of got back into reading. Or like whenever it came out within that year or whatever. But I'm going to be honest with you. The only reason that I want to read this is because I really want to read the second one in the series. Which is The Right Move. Because that's like a basketball romance. And obviously, we all know by now. My fiance, Riley, is a basketball player. How many times do I have to say it in my videos? Yes, he's a basketball player. We all know that, for goodness sake. But obviously that means that I want to read The Right Move more. But I don't really want to go into the second book in the series so I'm gonna start with this one I already know that I'm gonna like this to be honest I'm not reading it for the sake of it I actually think I am gonna really enjoy this book but I just thought I'd put that out there that the only reason I even want to read this series in the first place is because of the second one but I am gonna start this today I am heading guess where I'm heading guess where I'm going to basketball training with Riley <laughs> And before you say, no, you don't have to go. I know I don't have to go, but I like to go because it gets me my reading time. We've got training this week. We've got a basketball game to go to this week that isn't even his. There's a lot going on, but it means that I get a very big chunk of reading done, which is really, really good. It is quite long and I don't know how I'm going to feel about that, but we will cross that bridge when we come to it. I'll give you updates throughout. Yeah, here we are. <laughs> Hey guys, it is the next day now and I just wanted to give you a little update on where I am for Mile High. So I'm currently on page 239. Got quite a bit done this morning, read a little bit on my Kindle because obviously it is on Kindle Unlimited as well. So I've sort of been switching between the two, but mainly reading on my Kindle because it is quite a quite a chunky book. But I am currently at a basketball game. This is so random, it's not even Riley playing, but it's his coach's other team and we're coming to watch the boys play. And obviously I thought I would update you anyway because the second book in the series, which is called The Right Move, is a basketball romance. So I kind of wish I was reading that right now, but here we are but I am still thoroughly enjoying this the more I read the more I'm liking it and the more that the relationship progresses I'm enjoying it even more which is so good and I'm really invested in it now like I'm nearly halfway through I think I'm like 40 something percent so really excited to delve into it a little bit more hey no. guys this is our family vlogging channel <laughs> why do you hate it so much stuff this man is saying to her is crazy so she said i really don't like my stretch marks he said these you don't like that your body can adapt because i think that's pretty f cool <laughs> he's just making her feel so good and the plus size rep in this book phenomenal oh my god <laughs> you don't have to love your body every single day that's unrealistic to expect but i'll be here loving it for the days that you can't Oh my god. Guys, I'm reading the epilogue. I'm on page 560. Oh my god. Oh. The end. 
I've quite literally binged just under half of this book today. But I'm going to go to sleep because tiredness is taking over my body. And I'll give you a full debrief in the morning. I loved it. So it is time for me to review mile high for you because i have now finished it obviously as you saw i literally binged like just under half of this book yesterday which is absolutely crazy stuff and can we just appreciate that i used tabs as a bookmark and did not tab one thing and did read probably the most part of it on my kindle but we're not going to talk about that we are going to talk about my rating and review so i personally thought that this was a 4.5 it was a solid book very much enjoyed it i think there was a couple of little things i didn't particularly love about it and obviously i'll go into that a little bit more in a minute but I do think it was a solid book and I did enjoy it. I have heard that some people have DNF'd this, some people didn't like it, and the next book in the series is the favourite. But I really enjoyed this one, so I think I'll probably like the second one even more. Obviously, as I said, I rated it a 4.5 star. The things that sort of took away from it a little bit for me was the length of it. I'm going to be quite honest with you, there was no need for this book to be nearly 600 pages long. Absolutely no need. We could have taken 200 pages off of this maybe, and it still would have been a solid book. If anything, could have been a 4.75 if this was shorter. Don't get me wrong, it was very plot driven. So there was definitely movement within the story. It wasn't like things slowed down. It was still a very fast paced book. But there was just sort of like unnecessary conversations that were had, unnecessary scenes that just weren't that important to the story, not that important to the plot. And if we took just a couple of those out or didn't babble on for ages about people's emotions and stuff, probably could have been a more solid rating from me. But 4.5 is an amazing rating. It's still really, really good. Oh, and the other thing, completely forgot about that, was I had a little issue at the start with the main male character. And I feel like towards Stevie, Xanders was very physically attracted to her in like a nature but there was no emotions there there was no emotional need on his behalf whereas she sort of like fancied him and thought he was hot and whatever but you could see that she potentially did fancy him in, a, in an emotional way whereas he's literally just talking about her body all the time and talking about stuff that he would do with her and stuff which is nice that he's physically attracted to her but there didn't seem to be any emotional connection on his part whatsoever and i thought well, how can i root for a couple when he's not even trying to get to know her emotionally he's just admiring her body like it was very physical for me but i think he started liking her as a person way too late into the book for me to care but then i also think that the author may have done this because stevie has body issues and body confidence issues so i think the emphasis on the fact that he liked her body was a way for us to know that it doesn't matter what you look like you can still be loved and stuff because this book has amazing plus size rep the representation of this book she was a mixed raced plus sized girl who is very successful it was amazing it was great and i really appreciate that in the book but i think a little bit more of an emotional connection would have bumped this up maybe a quarter of a star for me very particular but that's just the way it is for me, I'm afraid. <laughs> but obviously, as I said, I'm so excited to read The Right Move now. I'm not sure when I'm going to get to it, but I definitely plan on reading it soon. And uh, I just need some basketball romances in my life. I just need it. Mm -hmm. 